Hey guys, it's Mark from Migrant Professional. Today, we are going to cover the 31 symptoms that a food that you ate is either sensitive or causing inflammation, migraines, and headaches. So, before we get started, it's, it's really crucial that you kind of figure out why um, so often foods don't just become sensitive out of nowhere It's because we have a problem going on whether that be our systems of detoxification are blocked up or the foods not being broken down or we have a dysbiosis an imbalance of gut bacteria maybe we have a parasitic or fungal infection maybe we just have leaky gut so you want to find out you want to get tested you want to see what's really going on so let's get going so the first symptoms are really kind of understanding your uh, cognitive side. So you wanna understand if you're getting some kind of brain fog, any kind of memory loss, irritability, or nervousness after your meals, you wanna be careful. You wanna kind of uh, check that out. Same thing with, being cr with getting cravings or being really drawn to a certain food. So often this happens with bread and cheese. So what happens in the breakdown of casein, which is found in dairy, and gliadin, which is found in wheat, um, you get what are called caseomorphins and gliadomorphins. Now these are actually, uh, they're kind of like um, parts of the digestive process. Once the gliadin and the casein is broken down in the gut, if it leaks through the gut and it turns into these compounds, these morphins, they're actually opiates. So opiates, like we know, are incredibly powerful, incredibly addictive. So you wanna be careful with those. Any kind of foods that you have cravings for or that you're really drawn to, kinda of wanna be careful with them. So the next thing is kind of energy levels. So if you have yawning, if you have any kind of tiredness, fatigue, or if you find you need stimulants after meals, if you feel like you need to have some sugar, you need to have some chocolate, you need to have a coffee, an espresso, a latte, anything like that, some, it could be that your energy levels are dropping off and you just have this sort of instinctual need to reach for something that'll give you more energy. So you wanna be careful for that need for stimulants. Next thing, digestive symptoms are huge but they don't always have to happen with food sensitivities. So digestive symptoms like bloating, gas, pain, cramping, uh, any kind of constipation or diarrhea, any kind of loose stool, you wanna investigate that. Same with reflux. If you're getting like acid reflux, acidy feeling, that means your foods aren't being digested properly, something's going off, something's going wrong. So next thing is mucus. Mucus or any kind of discharge. So if your nose is getting stuffed up after a meal, I mean, like with a spicy meal, okay, your, your nose might get a little leaky. But with regular meals, if you're getting mucus or discharge in your nose, in your throat, in your mouth, you want to be careful. That's a sign uh, your body's responding to something. Then uh, fasting. A lot of people that have sensitive, uh, that are sensitive to foods, they'll be much better from fasting. So with migraine sufferers, it's tricky because they'll be worse from fasting because of the blood sugar drop off. So you want to kind of see, is it, the, is it just the blood sugar or is there, are you better because you're not eating foods? You're not being exposed to those sensitive foods. Then we have recurrent or sort of uh, symptoms that are unexplained. Uh, you, you want to be careful because um, one of the first places to go, especially when you have a chronic condition, chronic symptoms that are showing up, things that aren't explained logically, you want to look into the gut. The gut is the source of our health, is the source of our resilience and our nutrients, uh, and it's often the source of disease. So you want to dive into that. Then circles under your, eye, your eyes, uh, that's also a sign of a parasitic infection. So you want to kind of rule that out, make sure that's not a problem. And then fluid retention. So retention of fluid anywhere in your body, like edema, that's a sign you wanna be careful. If you're holding onto fluid, you wanna be careful. Then there's diseases that show you that you may be kind of ha experiencing food sensitivities or prone to developing sensitive foods. So if you have a weak gut, you are more prone to develop sensitive foods. So in childhood, if you had a colic, lots of ear infections, asthma, tonsillitis, 
eczema. Um, those are all like recurrent tonsillitis. Those are all like telltale signs that you have a weak gut, that you may have sensitive foods, that you wanna see what foods you've been eating for a long time, you wanna investigate them. That often it's the foods that we have eaten the longest, the foods that we have eaten the most, the most frequently, that are the sensitive ones. But it doesn't have to always be the case. Next things, um, rashes. If you have rashes, if you have eczema, if you have hives, or if you have IBS, these are all telltale signs. There are food sensitivities going on. You want to get them addressed. So I'm going to link to an article in the description on the most common triggers for migraines. Uh, let me know in the comments what triggers your migraines and headaches. Thanks. Hey, it's Mark from Migraine Professional. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe in the bottom left corner so that others can find this information as well. If you want to learn more about migraines than you've ever known before and how to deal with them, make sure to go to our website. Thanks.